Israeli Ambassador Gilad Erdan does the world a favor by making plain Israel's doomed-to-fail strategy. We owe an ironic debt of gratitude to Israel's UN Ambassador Gilad Erdan for advancing the cause of the State of Palestine at the United Nations by delivering a speech to the UN General Assembly that was so unhinged, absurd, vulgar, insulting, undignified, and undiplomatic, Erdogan helped to secure a lopsided vote of 143 to 9 in favor of Palestine's UN membership. The rest abstained or did not vote. But more than that, Erdogan helped to clarify Israel's tactical approach and why it is doomed to fail. Let us briefly consider the content of Erdogan's speech. Erdogan claimed, in short, that Palestine equals Hamas and Hamas equals Hitler's Nazi Reich. Erdogan told the UN delegates that their nations support a state of Palestine because, quote, so many of you are Jew-hating, unquote. He then shredded the UN charter at the podium, claiming that the delegates were doing the same by voting for Palestine's UN membership. All the while, on the very same day as his speech and the UN vote, Israel was amassing its forces for yet more slaughter of innocent civilians in Rafa, Gaza. Erdogan's rant rose to the level of venomous hatred and absurdity. Palestine would enter the UN as a peace-loving state, a commitment stated firmly and eloquently by the Palestinian ambassador to the UN, Riyad Mansour. Quote, we want peace, end quote, Ambassador Mansour declared unequivocally. Moreover, the two-state solution will, of course, not happen in a diplomatic vacuum. According to the Arab Peace Initiative of 2002, and reaffirmed by the Arab and Islamic countries in Riyadh last November, the Arab and Islamic countries have repeatedly pledged to support peace and the normalization of relations with Israel as part of the two-state solution. Contrary to Erdogan's slander, the governments of the UN General Assembly are of course not Jew-haters. Rather, they detest the Israeli government's assault in Gaza, a carnage so vast that Israel is in the dock at the International Court of Justice on the charge of genocide. The same false charge has been made against student protesters who aren't anti-Jewish, but rather anti-apartheid and anti-genocide. The question then is what Erdogan was actually doing making a speech that was so over the top that it could only serve to bolster, not reduce, the overwhelming worldwide vote for Palestine. Of course, he was doing what all politicians do in the social media age. He was grandstanding for his adoring 157,000 followers on X, formerly Twitter, and for supporters in Israel's right-wing Likud party. At first, when listening to Erdogan, I simply thought that the man was deranged suffering from post-Holocaust trauma and seeing a Hitler lurking in every shadow. Yet such a view is naive. Erdogan is a highly experienced political figure, well-educated and well-trained, and was in full control of a carefully prepared speech, which included a poster and shredder as props. My initial mistake was to think he was speaking to the rest of the UN ambassadors and to viewers of the proceedings, such as myself. The great difference of broadcast era politics of yesteryear and the social media era of politics today is that politicians no longer speak to the broad public. They now communicate almost entirely with their base and their near base. Each person today receives a personalized flow of, quote, news that is jointly constructed by individual choices, that is, which websites we visit, networks of digital followers, algorithms of platforms such as Facebook, X, and TikTok, and hidden forces that include the intelligence agencies, government propagandists, corporations, and political operatives. As a result, politicians mobilize and motivate their base and little beyond. Erdogan, the politician, 
and his Likud party have been fighting against Palestinians for far longer than Hamas has dominated the politics of Gaza. Indeed, for longer than Hamas has even existed. Erdogan grew up inside the Likud party, from its youth wing onward, in a movement that has always stood stridently against a Palestinian state and the two-state solution. In fact, Likud has long treated Hamas as a political prop, a ploy to divide the Palestinians and thereby to fend off international calls for the two-state solution. As even the Israeli media report, Likud leaders worked with Arab nations over the years to keep Hamas funded so that it would pose a continuing competition to the Palestinian Authority. What then is Likud's strategy as Israel increasingly isolates itself from the rest of the world? Here too, Erdogan's own political past offers a clue. Erdogan has been one of Israel's shrewdest and most successful politicians in building Likud's alliance, not only with the wealthy American Jewish community, but with America's Christian evangelical community as well. The Christian Zionists ardently back Israel's control over the Holy Land, albeit as a prelude to their Armageddon, not exactly Likud's longer-term agenda. Likud's tactical belief is that the U.S. will always be there, thick or thin, because the Israel lobby, Jewish and Christian evangelicals alike, and the U.S. military-industrial complex will always be there. Likud's bet has always worked in the past, and they believe it will work in the future. Yes, Israel's violent extremism will cost Biden the support of America's young voters. But if so, that will just mean Trump's election in November, so even better for Likud. Likud's strategy relies entirely on the United States for Israel's security, as the sole blocking force in a world community that is increasingly united and aghast at Israel's massive war crimes, and in favor of imposing the two-state solution on an utterly recalcitrant Israel. Yet core U.S. interests, economic, financial, commercial, diplomatic, and military, are at odds with becoming isolated along with Israel within the international system. The Israel lobby will be hit by a pincer movement. On the one side, American voters, especially young American voters, are aghast at Israel's brutality. On the other side, America's geopolitical position is crumbling. Shortly, many European countries, including Spain, Ireland, and Norway, are expected to recognize Palestine and welcome its UN membership. Erdogan may end up at the top of the heap of the Likud party, but Likud and its extremist and violent partners in the coalition are likely soon to hit the limits of their arrogance, violence, and cruelty. Thank you.